Good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great night. Looking forward to a great day. YouTube is doing that stupid thing that it does every once in a while where it won't let me live stream. So I don't know what that's about, but that is the way it is. Um, today is Margaret Hoffmeyer's birthday. So happy birthday, Margaret. I hope you have a wonderful day today. And the cat photo of the day is called Boom and Gloom. Fourth of July festivities are often a stressful time for pets. And more cats and dogs go missing at this time of year than any other. If your cat won't be able to escape the loud noises from nearby fireworks displays, make sure that all the windows and the doors to your home remain closed and your cat has a safe hiding place under a bed or in a small windowless room. You may also choose to put on calming music or white noise, trying your best to speak in calm, soothing tones until the cacophony has passed. That is very true. And this is Mitten. Uh, Mitten lives in Phoenix, Arizona. What a pretty cat. Lucy never seemed to be bothered by the loud noises unless it was exceptionally loud. Um, I mean, she didn't like it, but she often, she didn't usually hide either. So we're curious to see what uh, Gemma's going to do because we haven't had a lot of loud noises. Um, we had um, a severe thunderstorm, not last night, but the night before. And she did okay with that, but uh, we also had a tornado warning, so we had to go to the basement. Um, which she really liked. She likes going down to the basement. She was very unhappy that I put the harness on her so that I could keep track of her because there's lots of places down there where she can hide. And when, as soon as it was all clear, we were, I mean, it was 1230 in the morning. So we were ready to settle down as soon as we could. And I wanted to be able to make sure we could do that. So, um, yeah, I'll keep you posted on the harness training. Huh. It's not going very well, <laughs> but hopefully she, she'll come around. Today is the commemoration of St. Thomas, the Apostle. So Thomas is often known as being the doubter, which is kind of unfortunate because Thomas is the one who says, okay, you know, Thomas is not there when Jesus appears to them on Easter afternoon, Easter evening. And, um, and then when he comes back, you know, I often joke, he's on a pizza run or, you know, getting subs for the, the rest of them, but for whatever reason, he's not there. And they tell him, Hey, we've seen the Lord. And, and he says, you know, unless I put my hands in, in his, on his, on his hands and, and put my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. Well, then Jesus comes back the next night or, or soon after and, and Thomas is there and um, and Jesus says stop doubting and believe and so then Thomas says Thomas is the first one to put together after the resurrection my Lord and my God he's the first one to do that so really he is believing Thomas not doubting Thomas but then Jesus says something that's really profound and he says, blessed are those, and he gives another beatitude and he says, blessed are those who have not seen and, but believe anyway. And when he, when Jesus said that he was talking about us, we who have not seen Christ in the flesh and yet believe anyway, based on the testimony of those who have gone before us, um, going, tracing clear back to the apostles themselves, uh, because without them and without their testimonies, none of us would be here. So that's my spiel about Thomas, but here's the devotion. And they're looking at John 14, that beautiful, uh, that beautiful part of the farewell discourses where Jesus is saying in my father's house, there's many rooms. Um, if, if we're not, so I'm going to prepare a place for you. And, and if it were not, so, um, I, I wouldn't be telling you this. And he, and then he says, you know, the way to, to, to the place where I'm going. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know the way we don't, we don't know what you're talking about. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. It's just beautiful. John 14, read it. You'll love it. Um, and so here's the devotion. When I move, you move. 
just like that. That's the endlessly repeatable refrain from a 2003 song by a singer named Ludacris. <coughs> and it seems that in John 14, Jesus is saying the same thing to his followers. Where I go, you go, just like that. The Apostle Thomas, whom the church remembers today, asked questions that everyone in the room was thinking. Just three verses earlier, Jesus had said to Peter, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. That's John 13, 36. And now Jesus says, You know the way to the place where I'm going. In verse 4, to which Thomas responds, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Sometimes following is not as easy as it sounds. But Jesus is not interested in explaining the way because he is the way. Just as dance is often best learned by doing rather than hearing it described in words, Jesus encourages his, his followers to dance with him into new life. Let us pray. Jesus, show us the way to new life. Move us toward the dwelling place that you have prepared. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. So there you go. We learn by doing. Jesus helps us. Um, Jesus shows us, Jesus helps us, and then says, go, do it. I'm here if you need me. Go, go do it. And that's, and that's what we do. Um, we try, try ever more to be more and more like Christ. Um, and we do that by loving God, loving neighbors, loving ourselves. Just beautiful. So we remember Thomas today for his faith, his, well, for first for his doubting. Because I think, I think doubt has a really important part to play in faith. Doubt is often the, the flower bed in, in which faith grows. Um, I, I hear a lot of people, I hear a lot of my colleagues condemn faith. I mean, we hear scripture and we hear Jesus saying, you know, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And yet God uses those times of doubt to help us grow. So, so doubt, doubting times are uncomfortable. Um, I don't like them myself, but I am grateful for them because I know that I trust God will use them to, to mold and shape us more and more into the people God's calling us to be. And for that, we can all say, thanks be to God. Have a great day today. As you remember, Thomas, do what you can to bring some love and light into the world. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it as always. Have a great day. I'll see you back here tomorrow.